Hi everyone, I'm Danny from Work in Nature and today we're going to discuss about a very important aspect of growing healthy orchids and this is detecting virus in orchids. Now I feel this subject is not nearly as covered as it should be in many sources and to help me better explain what viruses are and how we can avoid them, today I have the help of Agdia Bioforce who gladly accepted to send me all this good information along with some test kits so I can perform a test on my orchids and find out if they are infected with a virus or I have another issue on my hand. So I want to thank them very much for giving us this opportunity. Also, I will make available all this information for you guys, so check the description and you will find a link towards a scan of all these things to read and better understand viruses. But for now, let's find out what viruses are. Viruses are pathogens, and like virus can affect human beings, they can also affect all life forms, including plants and of course our orchids. Usually the immunitary system of an orchid can protect it from viruses and bacterial and fungal infections. But sometimes if we have a weak orchid or the virus is just too strong, it can take over the plant and can start meddling with its internal functions. Orchids that are infected with viruses can have serious development issues. Sometimes a virus can look like spotting of a leaf or even spotting of a flower, and in some cases a virus can mutilate the whole shape and color of a flower. Viruses are also to blame if an orchid doesn't grow properly or is just very weak and doesn't bloom. In some cases orchids that have a virus can suffer a slow death. In other cases orchids can survive with viruses, but they will have a slower growth, they will not develop as beautiful, they will not bloom as much as a healthy orchid, and the flowers might actually be very deformed. What's even worse is that viruses can be transferred from a sick orchid to a healthy orchid, usually by cutting tools that are not sterilized properly, but also by your fingers. If you're touching a sick orchid, you can pass on the virus to a healthy orchid. And in some cases, pests and insects can carry virus from one sick orchid to a healthy orchid. So trying to prevent all of that is crucial if you want to keep our orchids healthy. But the thing that makes orchid viruses so unwanted is the fact that they have no known cure. Just like in humans, if the natural immunitary system can fight it off, the orchid will be okay. But sometimes viruses are just so powerful that they can infect a whole orchid and there is nothing we can do about it once an orchid has been infected. Signs of virus infection can be very misleading and sometimes they can appear as bacterial or fungal infections. Also, these viruses tend to look different depending on the variety and sometimes even the plant itself. So determining if an orchid is virus just by looking at it is not a solution. And to top it all, some viruses don't even show signs until later on, so we can have an infected orchid and not even know it. So testing for viruses, I believe, is just as important as properly taking care of our orchids and keeping our growing area pest free. And I think the chance of actually spreading the virus are very big in our homes and greenhouses because inevitably our orchids will touch each other. And also, if you have a greenhouse, all the water that will drip from your hanged orchids can infect the orchids below them. And today I'll show you how to test orchids for the most common viruses you can find using the immunostrips provided by Agdia Bioforts. This is the test kit package you'll receive. It needs to stay refrigerated but not frozen, so I've kept it in my refrigerator up until now. Inside it, you will find these envelopes. They contain the liquid that will react with the sample leaf you want to test. You'll also find a tube which contains the actual test strips. These will tell you if your orchid is infected or is healthy. You'll also find a manual that describes how to use the test kit. You can use a scissors to cut open the envelope. Keep in mind that the scissors needs to be very well sterilized. I use a mixture of water and bleach. So cut open the envelope at the top. Then place the envelope in a vertical position so you avoid spillage of the liquid. Today I want to test this dendrobium orchid which displays a very bad case of leaf spotting. Now in the past all its leaves have fallen down and they all presented this sort of spotting. So what I will do is find a portion of a leaf which I can cut off. 
I will cut about one centimeter off this leaf. I will then place the leaf sample that I took into the envelope with the liquid. I will use the handle of the scissors to crush the leaf sample because I want the vital juices of the orchid to mix with the reactive liquid. The liquid in the envelope should be green like this. Now it's time to insert the test strip in this envelope. Make sure that the liquid does not go above this green line on the test strip. Keep the test in a vertical position and wait a few minutes. The test strip is actually very easy to read. Look at the white section just above the green section. If an orchid is infested with the Cymbidium mosaic virus, a pink line will appear closer to the green edge. If the orchid is infested with the Oncidium ring spot virus, there will be a pink line appearing midway. If the orchid is not infested with a virus, the control line, which is the farthest away from the green portion of the test strip, will appear. In order to have a valid test, you need the control line to appear. A test that does not present a control line is not a valid test. I have waited a few minutes for the test to reveal itself, so now let's look at the results. This would be the control line, so it appears that my orchid is not infested with a virus, which is a relief, but this means that I have a different type of infection, whether it's bacterial or fungal. I also tested this Phalaenopsis orchid that presents discolorations on the leaves and also indentations. I have a few cases like this, and this orchid was the one that was worrying me the most. But I have performed the test, and as you can see, it turned out to be negative. I only have the control line which tells me the test is correctly made, but the orchid is not virused. I have also tested this Oncidium orchid, which presents some weird patterns on its leaves. It seems that the dots are surrounded by a ring of other smaller dots. I was really concerned about this one, since this is the only Oncidium of the type that I own. And unfortunately, the test came out positive for Oncidium ring spot virus. As you can see, this line here is right in the middle between the green line and the white line. So this means this orchid is infected with Oncidium ring spot virus. I also have the control line, which tells me that the test was performed correctly. Unfortunately, I only have one option with this orchid, and this is to throw it away. Because this orchid actually means a lot to me, and I've rescued it, it's hard for me to throw it away, so I don't think I will actually throw it. I will just keep it very separate from my other orchids, because it can easily infect other orchids. For now, there is no way of curing it, as viruses have no known cure. This orchid means a lot to me, and as you can see, these spots can easily be mistaken for some fungus or bacterial infections. But actually, it's a virus. I've tested a few orchids that looked rather suspicious, but fortunately the tests were negative. And it's a real relief, I have to tell you. I was not expecting to have a real virus orchid. This orchid was purchased from a home improvement store where many people actually go and purchase orchids not knowing if they're virused or not. And when I purchased it, it didn't have any of these spots. Now, I am not sure if the orchid got the virus from another orchid that I have or if the orchid simply did not show any signs, which is a reason for worry and I think I will need to get more tests and actually test more of my orchids. So as you can see, no orchid is safe from viruses, and once the virus starts to develop into an orchid, there is no way of actually saving it. And what's worse is that many people buy orchids without even knowing if they're virused or not, because it simply doesn't show any signs. So if you have a big collection like I do, I personally have a hundred and something orchids in my growing balcony, an orchid like that can endanger all your collection. And I know we invest a lot of time and a lot of money in our collections, so testing for viruses for me is absolutely important and just became even more important because I didn't expect to actually have a virus. They always say they're rare, but apparently they're not so rare. 
Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video, even though it gave me some bad news. At least now I know I need to be careful and I need to discard that orchid or at least keep it very separate from my other orchids. As you could see, using the test kits was actually really easy and I could perform this in my own home. Now I know in some countries, including mine, it's pretty hard to get um, a sample to a laboratory to be tested, wait for the results and uh, so on. So using a test kit in your home is actually super easy and super convenient and it can save you a lot of headaches. So if you're interested in purchasing this product, which I absolutely recommend and I will buy some more, um, you can visit agdia.com. Uh, this is for USA, but in the description I will give you the link on how you can get in touch with with Agdia and get some tests for Europe. You have an email address in the description which you can use to actually purchase some test kits and the people from Agdia are really friendly people. They're actually the friendliest people I've ever met and they agreed to send me these samples and to make this demonstration to you guys and I'm very very thankful for that. Also I got to test a few of my orchids and definitely definitely I need to test some more because I'm very worried at this point that I might have some other infected orchids that can cause a real catastrophe um, in my orchid collection. So visit the description, you have all the information there. Also, if you want to read all this information that they so kindly sent to me, um, you have a link in the description and uh, you can actually download these files to read yourself. So thank you again, Agdia. It has been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for uh, trusting me to send this. And I hope you guys learned something new. Don't take orchid viruses lightly and always be careful that you do not touch your orchids until you know they don't have any viruses. Sterilize your tools. Make sure you don't have any pests in your growing area that can carry um, you know, the virus. And I really hope you'll stay safe from orchid viruses. If you are growing other things except orchids, you have some tests that actually test for more viruses uh, than the ones that I test today destined for orchids. So um, I will scan this as well so you can see what uh, type of plants can be affected by viruses and what viruses there are. Um, this product is a flash kit. This is something else. It just tells you if your plant is infected with any of these viruses, which can come super handy if you have a crop if you have like a backyard vegetable garden and so on um, because viruses can easily be, be passed on in a vegetable garden as well so I will put all these information in the description you will have everything as well um, on their website so I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something new I'm super happy I was able to do this for you and super grateful to Agdia. Um, so if you want to see other videos from me, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Also, you can visit orchidnature.com to have a discussion with our community and um, share your orchid stories. And until next time, stay safe and happy growing. Bye!